Welcome back. We've got Tim Story for you all here, the fabulous director of Tom and Jerry. Um, we're just going to get started and jump right in and make sure that everyone gets time to ask a question or two. Um, our first up is going to be Melissa from A Sparkle of Genius. Hello. Hello. Hi. Benjamin's going to ask our question today. Cool. Um, so we loved watching the wedding scene when the elephants get scared by Jerry. And what was hard about creating such a destructive scene when things causing the destruction aren't actually there? The, the hardest thing is, is trying to get it right the first time because you always only get two or three chances at it. So everything that broke, you've got about you know, the smaller the thing, the more shots at it, but the bigger things, tables and big, um, big uh, centerpieces on the tables and this and that, you only get about two or three times. So it's hoping everything goes right. And it's kind of without throwing stuff over, you really have to like rehearse it and rehearse it. And then at some point you hit action and you go for it and you, and you just hold your breath and Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But what's great about doing movies is like this, sometimes we also make um, digital versions of the things that we're breaking. So sometimes we'll literally paint out, if it's a mistake, a big enough a mistake, we'll paint it out and then put the digital digital version in there and make it make it happen again. Ah, very good, thank cool. you. Thanks. You're welcome. Our next question is gonna come from Amanda from Guide for Moms. Hi. Hello. Um, and my daughter Bella wanted to ask a question, so go ahead. Why did you choose for Tom and Jerry being the only animals who couldn't talk, but Tom was able to sing in the movie? Well, I take this straight out of the original cartoon. So I'm a big fan. Now there's been versions of Tom and Jerry throughout the, the decades, I should say. But my, I grew up on the 1940s, uh, I think it was late 40s to about 60, maybe maybe 59, the original Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Tom would sometime, every now and then he would say a sentence or this and that, but 95% of the time he never spoke. He and Jerry never spoke. And I don't think Jer Jerry ever spoke. And then there were also about maybe five or six cartoons of the hundred that they made where Tom actually sang. And so... I, I just kept, since that was a rule that they had done, I decided, okay, well, if he's saying once, I can, I can do what the originals did. So all of it is, is totally out of what Hanna-Barbera, the original creators um, did. And that was kind of my rule book. If they did it, I can do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Um, our next question is gonna come from Christy and her family from the Cactus Chronicles. How did you put the cartoon characters in real life? So what we would do is we had, you know, we would shoot a normal movie. So we had actors there obviously in sets and this and that. And sometime, especially with Tom, we had a puppet that was literally, we had a puppeteer with a puppet that was about the same size as Tom, also looked like Tom. And we would take that puppet and the actors would act against that puppet and then later, we would take the puppet out. So we would also do takes without the puppet. And whether we used the take with the puppet or not, we would um, uh, basically our digital artists would paint out the puppet and then put Tom in, which was also you know obviously created in computer, total CGI. And we would then later put it in. And first we would sketch it out to what we wanted Tom and Jerry to do or the elephants or whomever and be sure we like exactly what they did. And then we would hand it off to our animators and they would literally work with the footage that we had given them. And um, before you know it, you're looking at, uh, at, at Tom and Jerry uh, right inside of uh, the footage that we, uh, we, we shot on set. Thank you. You're welcome. Great, our next question is gonna come from Vina and Eddie. Trying to unmute. Unmute. Okay. That's right. There you go. <laughs> um, you want to about the sequel. Is there like a sequel coming out after this? What a great question. You know, <laughs> we ha we don't know yet. Uh, 
we're really hoping that all, you know, we have enough of people like yourselves that love the movie enough and ask for one. If you guys kind of say to us, we liked it enough and there should be another one, then normally, uh, normally Warner Brothers says, um, let's give it another shot. So fingers crossed that uh, so, you know, many people say that they enjoyed the, uh, the ride. Good question, Eddie. Our next question is going to come from Christina Patizio and her kids who are, are in Tom and Jerry gear, which we love. love we love that. the movie. Okay, which question? Introduce yourself. Um, my name is Kennedy and my name is Carter. <laughs> Do hey you have a favorite scene in the movie or a favorite memory making the movie? Well, I keep coming back to... Um, the whole sequence, sequence where Tom is walking across the, the wire to get to Jerry and then into the hotel room in which they destroy the hotel room. Because one thing that I've always loved and what I grew up on is Tom and Jerry would always destroy the house they were in. And somehow I always questioned why the owner never threw them out, but they would always destroy. And I've always wanted to make a real version of that. And so when I was able to take a hotel room and completely destroy it over and over and over again. It was the best feeling in the world. Don't try that at home, kids. It won't go well. Carter, did you have a question too? Okay, do you wanna answer the one on the fence? Okay. Were you a Tom and Jerry fan growing up and why did you wanna be part of this movie? I was completely a Tom and Jerry fan. Mm -hmm. um, I watched Tom and Jerry every afternoon after school. I think they were on Monday through Friday. I, I kind of remember it was from three o'clock to four, if I remember correctly. And I watched it all the time. And it was to the point where when I had done another movie with Warner Brothers and I sat down with um, the leadership there, uh, the president, and they brought up Tom and Jerry. I stopped them. I said, absolutely. I started rattling off episodes and ideas just because I knew it so much that um, it was, I never thought in a million years, me being young and watching those cartoons that I would ever do a movie like it. But once it was offered to me, I couldn't say no. I just couldn't say no. Well, we're glad you did it. Um, our next question is gonna come from Toby Book from Mommy Poppins with her daughter. The names of these, these channels are just, Absolutely cool. Well, <laughs> we didn't invent that one. So. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, good. I'm just, every time I hear them, I'm like, these are great. Um, so let's see. Um, are you finding that um, most kids already know Tom and Jerry well, or do you think that this is going to be the introduction for a lot of uh, the, new, the kids, the young kids? That's a great question. Um, I'm finding it kind of a mixed bag. Like um, some, I, I find it probably, if I was to give it a percentage, um, maybe I find like 30% know about it. Um, they've been a little bit harder to find. They do they do run on some of the channels, but as we know, um, Boomerang. yeah, kids are kids are in such control of what what they can watch now that I just like with my son. I have a when I started the movie, my son was seven. He had never seen them before, mm -hmm. and when I let him watch them, he all of a sudden watched seven episodes in a row and just and just from that point on just loved them. So I find that there's a, a little bit of a, a give you know, a give and take of who who knows about it. But I I, mu I must admit, once they see it, the the reaction is almost always the same. They just they they get into it, they love it, and and it's kind of fun to watch that that first time um, of them seeing it. So awesome! Thanks, Toby. Our next question is going to come from Sandra from Mama Noticias. Hi, how are you? Hi, guys. I have a question. Um, our family loved the integration of the sound fans, effects from the original cartoon. Uh, how did the, the element come to be? Because we love it. <laughs> well, we originally, when, when we first got onto this, I did um, another fun fact is that we shot the entire movie in London. And so in recreating that, when I first got on the movie, I just took a lot of inspiration from the old, the old stuff. Um, just, we had pictures. I made it a point to go back and watch every episode of the original Tom and Jared. There's like 113 um, um, shorts and they're, you know, they're only six, seven minutes long. 
So I watched all of those back and we just found that we would take stuff from that and just kind of say, there were some situations where I, I would literally say, just do this, do exactly what they did. Um, there's the idea when Jerry has the, his fist closed and you know, that's talk taken straight out of the cartoon. And so often, anytime I could, um, I would just take stuff out of the cartoons. And it's really wonderful when you have this much material, it's almost like having a, an encyclopedia. And anytime you get stuck, you can just say, let's look for a moment when Tom hit Jerry or when Jerry hit Tom. And, you know, so I just, it was, it was just that much fun to just kind of take all this material and just try to recreate it. And the animators actually enjoyed, you know, many times just uh, recreating what was already there. Great. Um, our next question is gonna come from Shannon from Redhead Mom. Hi, um, I would love to know which one do you prefer, Tom or Jerry? Who's your favorite? I'm a Jerry fan. I, I just, Jerry's just got so much personality and swag and he's just cool. And one thing that has always been my, my, my biggest love of, of the character of Jerry is his, is his mouse hall, his home. You know, he always created a home just like ours, but mouse size. And one of my biggest, my biggest joys was to recreate his home. Another fun fact, his home is completely digitally created. So none of that is real. That's really awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Victoria Infante and your boys, you have some questions for us? Yes, um, Tim, me first, let me know. I mean, let me tell you that it's today's Victor's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. He's 10 today, so you are part of his celebration. Oh, that's awesome. But he has a question. Um, for some of the animals, why did you decide to use CGI instead of live animals? Well, we always thought it would be a really fun world. Um, making movies is a lot of what if, you know? And so we thought it would be a really fun movie if since we were making Tom and Jerry, you know, um, we knew they were gonna be animated. There was never an idea to try to make them real. We thought, if, how do you have this world where you've got a, a cartoon cat and mouse, but every, every other animal is real. So the idea came up is what if, every animal and insect were animated. And we never asked the question of how this happened. Uh, um, never asked that question. And um, we just decided to do it that way. And, and I guess the biggest reason also is Tom and Jerry look a certain way. The, the original 2D animation looks a certain way. And I wanted to be sure um, for kids, but especially adults, when you saw this, this, these iconic characters that we grew up on, that they looked exactly like or at least as close that I could get to them as what they originally looked like. So that's the, that's the main reason. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we have time for another two more questions. Do any of the kids have any secondary questions? Eddie, it looks like you do. Go for it, Eddie. You, okay. Um, how did they break the hotel, the glass ceiling? <laughs> in the animal tornado? So the glass ceiling, uh, once again, another CGI created um, thing. We just always talked about what it would be like if the animal tornado went up into the building, which was also, you know, uh, not real. Anytime you saw the building in its entirety, it was not real. And we just thought it would be great that it broke that. So once again, it was movie magic, uh, computers as we're all used to now creating that glass and then allowing it to break just as we wanted to. Everything in there was created um, completely. Uh, I'm pulling back a big curtain on this movie. So much of it was, was uh, created in the computer, but that's the best way for us to get, have the freedom to do whatever we wanted to. So once again, it's the computer allowing us to do exactly what we wanted. Gotta love technology. Yes. Um, any other, we got one more question from Melissa's son from A Sparkle of Genius, and then we're going to say goodbye. Um, was there anything that you had to cut out of the movie that you wanted to be in the movie? Oh, good question. Um, there was actually a, when at the end with the drone chase through the city, there was actually a section of that chase that involved the seagull um, that 
that caught Jerry or grabbed Jerry in the beginning of the movie where Jerry got to get revenge on the seagull. So the seagull comes, flies down, tries to get him. Jerry does a, a, a loop and gets in back of the seagull and tries and, and kind of cuts off some of his wings, uh, feathers. And this. so I wanted to do that, but at some point we just figured let's, uh, let's keep it shorter than keeping it too long. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, well, um, oh, Victoria, it looks like your son has a question. One more question, you guys, and then we're gonna say goodbye. Thank you. Actually, is is my question. I'm curious, Tim, about what made you decide to be a movie director. Oh, um, I've always I wanted to be a movie director since I was about 13. Um, my brother was given an eight millimeter camera, um, the the equivalent of our iPhones now. Mm -hmm. um, given an eight millimeter camera a long time ago um, when I was young, and he would he used to be into dirt bike racing, and he was a musician and. So he would shoot kind of a lot of this stuff. And at some point he outgrew the camera and just literally said, do you want it? He gave it to me and I started shooting first with my Star Wars figures and stuff like that. And then moved into shooting my friends, you know, running around the, the, the streets. And then at some point I started making little films when I was uh, 12, 13 and never, uh, never looked, um, uh, you know, never, never looked at anything else. I've always wanted to do film. So we should credit your brother. Yes, <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> the choice time, Tim. Thank you. Well, thank you guys all again for taking the time to spend your Saturdays with us. Um, we're so glad that you guys and your families enjoyed Tom and Jerry. I know that my family did too. Um, thank you, Tim, for you know taking some time too to chat with everybody and their kids and enlighten them a little bit about the process and. We're so glad that you're bringing Tom and Jerry back to the big screen. So thank you. Oh, thank you, everybody. This has been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.